clapping for myself. Welcome to the Build Series. We are coming to you live from uh, the corner of 4th and Broadway here in New York City. I'm Kevin Kenny. I'll be your host today. And uh, if you think back to high school, when you were 16 years old, you're probably just trying to make it through sophomore year, right? Well, our guest today is 16 years old and already has three Billboard number ones, and her new album, Redemption, is out everywhere this Friday. Please let's make some noise for Skylar Stecker. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. That's Good. you stole my first question, Skylar. <laughs> I mean, that was my go-to. I care more about how you're doing. So that, that is a, that's a great <laughs> guest. I like that kind of guest. How are you doing though? Because this is a huge week. It's album release week, and another round yes. of applause for that. Ah! I'm so excited. I can't believe it. Yeah. It feels like just yesterday I was deciding whether or not I was going to even put out an album in the first place. Well, right. I mean, really, this is probably, it's over a year journey because if you want to take it back, let's just start at early 2018, right? Mm -hmm. you got a big decision to make yeah. for, for any person, but especially a young person, young artist, where you go, you know, am I going to gamble on myself and take the independent route? Am I going to stay with, you know, maybe a, a bigger uh, operation? Yeah. You bet on yourself. Yeah. And the bet paid off. It did. It did. Um, the number one thing that I got from that is just creative control. And I just so know who I am as not only a person, but my vision of where I want to go in my career. And, you know, the, it was just visions weren't aligning. And I just I just knew that I had to take back that power um, and get my own redemption. Absolutely. So, yeah. It's right there in the title. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> let's let's go even further back, actually, than, yeah. than 2018. You know, you, uh, you're still 16, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so still 16, which is incredible. The three number ones we'll get into a little bit. Uh, but this, it's not something where, like, you started at four. You started, how old were nine. you? Nine. Nine. When I was nine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. well, when you entered this talent show. Yes, to play piano. Right. And then the teacher was like, no, I don't want you to play piano. I want you to sing. And no one in my family does anything musical, so then I was like, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> and I sang for her, and then found that I got in for the singing, sang in the talent show, and just, like, was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is what I want to do. This is why I'm on this earth, like, to do music. Wow. Yeah. What, so, okay, backtrack. There's so much to talk about. <laughs> the piano. Why the piano? Yes. Did you play piano as a kid? Well, I've been playing piano since I was five. My mom okay. signed me up because... She's always wanted to play an instrument, and she just thought I would like it, but also she heard it's supposed to help with math. Okay. So it wasn't even for the music reasons. <laughs> yeah. It was for academics, and then I just I fell in love with piano, but I never knew it would turn into what it has today. Do you remember what song you were going to play on piano at that first? Yeah, I was going to play Maybe, um, Annie, from Annie the oh, Musical. Okay. And then she was like, just, just sing it. Do you know the words? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and I sang it. Well, who is this ma magical woman that kind of gave My you music teacher in Wisconsin, where I'm from. Wow. Yeah. And I went back actually a couple of years ago and I sang for the music students at the elementary school and um, got to see my old teacher and everything. It was really cool. It was like surreal. So you did the Annie song at the talent? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. So, you know, of course now it's this, it's this great blossoming career. You're having all the success. It's almost, you know, in, in some ways it's a business now, right? That, 100%. You're a professional. Yeah. But if you can think back to being nine years old and singing that song for the first time, what were the emotions or what was it about that experience that made you fall in love with it? I don't know. It's hard to explain. It just was the moment I got on. I just remember being, I was super nervous just because I didn't know what to expect. And I didn't really want to practice because I just didn't know what would come out. I was just, the whole thing was just like shocking for me. And I just sang and I just, it was just like, that was like something was telling me inside that I just felt super comfortable at home. Even though that was the first time I ever did it. I just felt like this is, this is right. Like this, this makes sense. So I immediately after the talent show, I got off stage. I was like, mom this is what I'm doing. And my mom was like, oh gosh, <laughs> like here we go. And then I ended up just learning the national anthem and just submitting it everywhere that I possibly could find online. Cause in Wisconsin at nine, I mean, there's not much you can do to pursue a music career. So by six months later, I ended up singing for like the Dodgers, Lakers, Clippers, Packers, Angels, Saints, like over, I've done hundreds of national anthems in my lifetime. So that's the first song I ever learned. So, um, and then it just turned into me then writing my own music on my piano, um, putting out my first independent EP, which then led to getting signed and then um, putting out my album when I was here last. Uh, and then all the craziness with then ended like, me leaving the label and um, now being independent. So. Yeah, you've done a lot, Skylar. Thank you. It's, 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 a, yeah. it's been a journey, but I'm, I mean, it's all the way it's worked out. All the craziness has been great. And I'm really looking forward to 
continuing to see what happens in the future. I want to ask you, oddly enough, about the national anthem really quick, because yeah. I can't carry a tune for my <laughs> life. But I've heard from a lot of singers, that's actually an incredibly challenging song to sing. It is a challenging to- song to sing. Um, for me, though, now, I feel like because I've done it for so long, now when I do national anthem, it's usually I only have a few days before I like do it, because I just, it's like, in, like it's inside it's of It's like me. muscle memory. Almost. Exactly. Um, so... Luckily, when I was not, I don't really remember having to like, but once you find like your key, like what you want to do with it, it's pretty easy, but I could be biased because I've been doing it for so long. <laughs> well, I mean, what is your approach to that? Because some, some artists have famously or infamously, I should say, made it their own, Yeah, you know? That's do you scary. think you should stick to the anthem or you think you should remix it in your own special way? Um, I feel like you should do whatever you feel like translate artistically best to the person. Right. Because the song is so there's so much room to do what you want to with it. So, I mean, I kind of go in between. Like, I do things, but I like to still keep it. I don't like to go too crazy with it. But I still like to, of course... I mean, it's a very vocally, like, powerful song, so I like to kind of, you know... Well, and you've got the vocals, Put some stuff in there that's fun, some sauce or whatever you call it. I don't even know. (laughs) Uh, you, You have an interesting story when you think about... You know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, I saw someone sing or I saw someone on television yeah. and that's what made me want to do it. It sounds like from what you just told me about this talent show, it was like you learned you wanted to do this through doing it. But there had to be people you looked up to, right, on the television, on the computer. Yeah, I mean, I have always loved Bruno Mars. Okay. I think I just as a performer and everything, he's just amazing. And I also love Beyonce. I mean, who doesn't love Beyonce, though, honestly, right? right? So I love her and I and I my my I'm. My dad's side of the family grew up, like, he listened to all, it's like, 90s R&B, like, he still does. Like, if you were to throw out some mainstream artist's name, he, like, ha- would have no idea, honestly, who it was, unless it's, like, Donny Hathaway or New Edition or Jodeci <laughs> yeah. or something. Um, so I grew up, like, listening to that and through my family, and so I just, I feel like it makes sense why I'm in the R&B kind of pop world, because totally. that's just what I was influenced through with, subconsciously without even, you know, knowing. Well, and mom's here, right? Uh, yeah, she is. I think back. she's back in the green room, though. Hi, okay. mom. Uh, oh, she's over here. <laughs> oh, there you hi, go. Hi, mom. Uh, she doesn't want to be on the camera. She, she was a big pop fan, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, well, I you... mean, she listened to like R&B too, but she like, I mean, more like, you know, Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, Britney, Chris, like, yeah. There you go. Yeah, so I kind of got the mix from both my parents. Mom, were you Team BSB or NSYNC? I think NSYNC, right? Yeah. NSYNC. Okay. All right. JT. Oh wow. Yeah. Ooh. That's, That's a, a good, good musical one. education, little uh, yeah. They've, and it's world. funny because I just feel like I never tapped into it, but it's really because my whole family. I mean, my parents are both like musical, like with listening, like they love listening, but they were never like musical like internally. Um, but yeah, and it's funny because now I look back at scrapbooks and stuff, and when my grandparents would come and like babysit me as a child, they would be like, "She like sang all day and whatever." And we had no idea. I was like, "Oh my gosh, maybe I always have been, but I just never tapped into it because I just assumed I would be bad." <laughs> <laughs> Did I make this up, or do, do you come from an athletic family? Yeah, my dad used to pl- play football. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, cool. So I'm you not from athletic. a talented family. I'm not talented athletically. No, no. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> it did not pass down. I mean, my parents tried putting me because I mean, they're great. They wanted me to find what I loved, like, and just like have that thing. And I just, I, it was always like people would like be like, "Oh, put her in soccer and this and this." And I always tried it. And I'd be the kid in the outfield, like picking their nose. Like, yeah. that was me. Like, I just never gravitated towards sports at all. But my brother's the opposite. My brother's 11, and he's like total like football. Yeah, I'm gonna be better than you, Dad, and like all this stuff. He's like totally. Like me, but in sports form. That's so. awesome. Well, yeah. maybe one day, you know, he can play in the NFL, and then you'll sing the national anthem. That's what my mom always says. Right? I feel like that's a good plan. Great I like minds that. think that alike would, right there. Yeah. Yep. That would be a fun day, <laughs> for I sure. I was team in sync, too, so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, let's get into just the, the title. We kind of touched on it a yeah. little bit before. Uh, but redemption. I mean, uh, there's a lot that goes into this. Uh, why did you name it redemption? And then also, uh, it's a two-parter you don't mind no 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 uh what would what needs to happen with this body of work for you to feel and experience redemption well okay answer to your first question redemption to me given what i had to go through with making that decision and you know being my own redemption and i feel like redemption the word is usually used in the context of wanting redemption or needing it but in the song i say i'm going to be my own redemption which is really what I've had to do and what I really want to inspire not only young adults but just everyone is to no matter what happens in life because at some point everyone goes through it where you might feel like 
something's going on and you have to rely on somebody else to do something for you or wait around for it just to fix itself. But at the end of the day, we have the power within ourselves to keep moving forward and to make the best out of what is and to keep going and to be strong and to be our own redemptions um, and not rely on other people to fix things or make things better for you. So I've definitely had to learn that. And I just felt like the whole album, all the songs, no matter if they're about love or if they're sad or angry, they all have this self kind of confidence, like empowerment in them, like an undertone of that. And I just felt re redemption, that word, just kind of summed it all up together perfectly. Um, so that's why I named it redemption. And then second question, I mean, I just really want to inspire people um, with the message of what I went through and just, I, because I definitely went through a phase with everything where I was confused or I was like, am I making the right decision? Or, and then sadness, just of like, you know, there were, it was a relationship. So they were like family and I was like upset, but then I was also like, this is something I need to do. So it was a lot of emotions and I just want to inspire the people that to feel those emotions, but then like be strong and come out of it and be progressive. And, you know, I, I've been through it too. And I'm sure everyone here has gone through something like that as well. And I want people to know they're not alone. Was there ever a point where you just want to like run away from it all? Like you are so yeah. young where you're just like, you know, maybe this is a thing I did. Well, not from music. Oh no. So, okay. So there was never no. a moment where you're like, not from music, but from just the situation. I mean, I started and that was the main thing, which is why I knew I had to make the decision to go independent was because I felt like my vision and my c c creativity and the, the, the thrive, like the want to keep growing. And I just, I was feeling like I wasn't being listened to that if I just kept going in that situation that it was like, I wasn't going to get to where I wanted to be in that situation. Um, I was starting to just do music and like that I wouldn't even write and I write all my own music. So I was just being like told what to sing and that my opinion was bad and just a lot of stuff that it was just, I, I didn't want to, it was making music not fun anymore. And, right. that's, and that's the main, like, it's fun to be creative and to do new things. And I'm so proud and excited about this album because it was fun for me to make because I got to put those stories and everything in it. And I'm so proud of the work it is. But some of the music in the past, I, I just look back and I'm like, that's just not even me. And right. people are listening to what I have to say because they want to hear what I have to say. I mean, I might as well be some other random person singing it because it's not even, I don't even feel that way. You know what I mean? So that was the number one reason why I just had to get out of that was just because I, it wasn't, it just didn't feel authentic. So during that period of time, I started to become sad a little bit and a little bit depressed because music is my soul, but I wasn't even being able to share my soul in the way that I wanted to. So Absolutely. But I never wanted to run away from music. If anything, I was like, yeah. I need it more. Yeah, <laughs> like, you want to get closer on. to the music. Yeah, exactly. I really appreciate you being so honest about that whole experience. We had an artist yeah, named Grayson you. Chance on a few weeks ago, and he went through something. He's it amazing. Like, oh, he's so good. He's and he's got a new album out Friday as well. Oh, cool. So after you listen to this, listen to Grayson. <laughs> I will. Uh, but no, uh, he, he went through a similar thing, and I, I think it's awesome that artists like you guys are being honest because I think for fans, and especially the younger fans, you just assume whatever you're getting from Skylar is Skylar. Exactly. You don't understand that maybe there's people that are telling Skylar what to sing about yeah. or telling you, you know, how to dress or how to look or how to appear. So it's really encouraging. It's very exciting that Friday we're going to get the most authentic 100%. look at you that we've yeah. gotten as an artist. Yeah, and that's what cool. makes me, like, me excited about it and why I wanted to put on an album because people were like, oh, why don't you just do an EP, like you're 16, whatever. And I was like, no, but like I need to show people because when they come and see my music, if they're new listeners or whatever, they're not getting the real Skylar, you know what I mean? And I needed to put something out where I could be like, listen to this, like, you know, like you're going to hear about who I am and just by listening to these songs. So I want to really ask you, but I don't, I don't think it's out yet. It's, there's a snippet though on Instagram, on your yeah. Instagram. It's, I think it's track nine. It's fire. Okay. Yeah. I did. Yeah. One, I did snippets for every single song. Okay. Yeah. We did like mini 15 second music. Yeah. Videos. Is that the right name? The fire. fire. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. It almost Thank sounds like you. a little bit of like a weekend song. A little bit. I can hear bit. that. Yeah. I also got like Miguel like a little yeah, bit. Yeah. No, too. totally. That's kind of I don't like know. I like, lane. yeah, it's cool. That uh, one's one of my favorites. Tell me about fire. So fire I did with um, Tricky Stewart, who also produced a song of mine called Only Want You. Right. Um, and he did fire and up on game on the albums. And those, and that one is, those two songs are very, I would say, the most upbeat and like fun out of like lighthearted songs on the album. Um, but that one is just more so just about having a good time and um, just having fun. It's one of the, definitely the less deep songs on the album for right. sure. What's mm -hmm. the deepest song on the album? Deepest song on the album would have to be Don't Test Me. 
Who's that? You know, I want to thank you for segueing. You stole my first question. You're like what? reading my mind. This is great. Because I wanted to ask you, who is that directed at? You don't have to name names, but like when you when you sing that song, who do you think about? <laughs> that song, well, the thing about that song that I love is that it's so, I don't say like boy or like anything in it. So it honestly can be about whatever anyone wants to, like it, it can be about a relationship, a work relationship. It doesn't have to be like romantic. Right. Um, to me, it was about a work relationship with um, people just felt like not being, not feeling like I was being heard. Right. Um, just like, uh, I mean, it just talks about just why you're getting mad at my opinion, like stuff like that. Just, it's kind of, the song translates like all the thoughts in my mind. I was just thinking of like, oh my gosh, like why is this happening? And what is this? And what, what, what do I do in this? It's, you know what I mean? So it's more of like a mental kind of song. It's like all the thoughts that were going on in my mind when all the, craziness was going down <laughs> who helped you the most through the craziness though because you have such a great my family it, yeah was it your family yeah because it seems like you sure. have such a strong foundation mm -hmm. and i'm not just saying that because mom's you. right there no but it's true i mean i honestly not only just because of like all the time and effort my family helps put into my career and help me follow my dreams but just as being a family and just a support system i i couldn't have gotten through it without them and everything i mean there was days where i would just be like on the verge of just like an emotional breakdown of just like, cause I, the thing with this album too is I've always been kind of scared because I've been, it's been like kind of shamed to like give my opinion. So I've always, I started to become scared of um, showing vulnerability and to be truthful and like give how I actually tell people how I felt um, because I had to do stuff where I was like, yeah, everything's great. And you know, and it wasn't. And so um, I just got scared of showing that and I had to reteach myself that that's what you're supposed to do. Like vulnerability is a strength. That's not a weakness. Um, and so my family definitely helped me realize that and um, went through the waves of emotions with me to get me kind of where I am now um, mentally and just, you know. Right. So I'm very grateful for my family. Mom, are you super camera shy? Can you come here for like one second? She is so. Are you going to kill me? The, she's probably going to be like, I didn't do my hair today. Just, yeah, come over, <laughs> come over here one second. Uh, because I feel mom. like, you know, you're, you're half of this story. Uh, Skylar's mom, everybody, by the way. Round of applause. Woo! The new Best star mom. build. Um, you know, Skylar just kind of detailed this journey and, and how important you were and the family was to it. Can you kind of just tell your side of it and what it's been like to see Skylar grow? Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I mean, me and my husband are so proud of her. I mean, we have literally watched someone that grow up before our eyes and, and honestly get to the point where she is teaching us watching her strength, her persevere, her going after her dreams, never, ever faltering from the final goal, which is inspiring, you know, for me as a 43-year-old woman. I just, growing up, I just didn't have that, you know, in me and watching her. And I just, and one of the talks that she was talking about with Don't Test Me is she were driving up to a session and the producer was so excited to work with her and was very, like, wanting an upbeat song. And Skylar goes, I love him so much. His name is Richard Vision, by the way. One of the best. Great. And so we're driving there, and she's, he's, you know, she, he wants an upbeat song. I want to give him what he wants. And she just started crying. She goes, I just can't do it. You know, I'm just not, I'm just not in the right. And I'm, Skylar, you know this guy. He's going to let you do whatever you want to do. Just go out there and be you and write what you want to write. And she goes, ah. and so she went in. She got in my car after the session. And she's like, he was totally down. I ended up writing, don't test me. And she just, like this, you could just see, it just lifted, like the whole weight of all of that yeah. year. Had that was the lifted. start of redemption. That was like, I was like, I'm not lying anymore. Like through my, like I'm being honest about everything. Yeah. And immediately she's like, this is the beginning to a whole new era of me being honest. And from there, she just, that's why she did with this video, um, Cold Creator did the video for her on that with the piano. And she just said, I just want people to see me from now on. Before I was like hiding behind all this stuff. Like in this video, I just want it stripped down, me and the piano. And um, it was just like she said, the beginning to her own taking her own self back. So I'm so proud of her. Oh, so that was so guys, sweet. Thank you so much love for coming. Up. Round of applause, guys. Aww. I love that. Yeah, she's the best. That's great. Uh, all right, well, to follow up, Mom, let's go to social media. This comes from Twitter, <laughs> at Cool1051. Hey, Skylar Stecker, oh. if you could give any advice to uh, your younger self, what would you say? Well, first of all, this is Paul, one of my super fans, and he's great, so shout oh, out to Paul. A big fan of NCIS, I guess. I guess so. I've never actually <laughs> noticed that. I don't know. Cool. Anyway, um, if you could give any advice to your younger self, I would say 
I wish I just would have been honest sooner and to just followed my gut. Because I always have, but I, I just let other people and just like contradicted myself um, being young and in the industry and just wanting to, just wanting my music to be heard so bad that I was kind of just doing what I had to do and taking advice from other people that necessarily wasn't good for me. So I would have just told myself to follow your gut and make those decisions. Like you are right. Like, you know what I mean? Don't let anyone else tell you what to do. So it's great yeah. advice. Uh, <laughs> let's get to the uh, first question. We're going to take some from our uh, fans here in the studio. First yeah. Come from over here. Cool. Hi. <laughs> How would you describe your album in one word? Um, I would say powerful. Um, not like vo not only like vocally and stuff like, but just the messages. I feel like they all, no matter what they're about, they all are just very powerful and strong messages. Um, so I would say that, and also honest too. Mm -hmm. That was two words though, but. <laughs> And redemption. Yeah, and redemption. I was going to say that, too. But I was like, ah, they're probably already expecting me to say that. Uh, we have time for one final question. It'll come from behind me. Yeah. Hi. Hi. I was wondering if there are any artists active now that you would like to collaborate with in the future, or if there's any collaborations coming up that we could look Ooh, forward to. Good question. I don't have any collaborations right now. Um, I've been brainstorming because I'm already starting the process of writing more music and another album. Um, so there's definitely, we've left open like, oh, this would be a cool idea for a rapper or this singer or whatever. But I mean, my all time top collaboration I would love to, artists I'd love to collaborate with, with would be Bruno Mars. Yeah, or Alicia Keys. That'd be cool, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks for your Or question. like a trio, like all of us together. Yes. That, yes, that I would faint, I think. I'd be like, oh, the ultimate song. But for me, I'd listen to it all the time. Are there, are there any <laughs> Just their parts, though. Are there any features on the album? It's just no, you. just That's, me. I love that. Thank you. Because I think, no, and features are cool and they're fun. But I like, yeah. I like when, especially if it's going to be like the first independent release and, and the most you we've ever gotten it's cool to, that it's exclusive to Skylar yeah I appreciate that thank very you cool. and it's out Friday yes so listen tomorrow at midnight really yeah that's very cool and then where can it's we crazy. follow you on social media everywhere just my name Skylar Stecker I love it yep some people make keep it complicated it simple. <laughs> keep yeah. it simple guys one more time for Skylar oh thank you guys